send something home to your loved ones send something to your children parents spouses send something to one another children send something to your parents preachers even you know we men of god sometimes we are always receiving pastors do something to your people too no matter how small and then members to do something to your leader don't just say amen thank god we are finished now go let god who called you help you is i'm not saying you should do anything for me no but i'm teaching you is a very good never watch a man bless you from january till december and wrap up that year without blessing the person it's a good culture i'm not teaching you to give me anything believe me god has been faithful to me but it's a culture you must learn that includes your boss in office some of you are soon going on break go and get a hamper i don't like the director but you like your tomorrow and you bring the hamper and drop it and the man is surprised why did you do this he first suspects you because he's not used to people being kind for no reason and then after one week he calls you then he starts telling you the story of his life because you have earned a right to move deeper in relationship with him by january you receive an email that you have become a director and people will say no this lady must have done something they are right you walked your way by intelligence to rise and scale to the position of a director do you understand what i'm saying yes. do not allow anybody who has played a significant role in your life without maintaining the relationship and some of you have money you are rich use your money to build relationships relational investment is greater than any other investment it is because of relationships people go to heaven it's because of relationships people go to hell don't ignore relationships are we learning connect with good relationships quality relationships Apostle, I'm not that kind. I don't visit people. Choose people to visit. Now, there's no excuse. Visit someone. Surprise them. Go to their home. Just go and sit down. I just came to say hello. Wow. What do we do? No, 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 no. Don't bother yourself trying to do anything. Joke with them. Play with them. How are you doing? Pray with them. Carry a gift and drop. And tell them you leave. And you watch that widow crying. And you watch that person crying and say, No one has ever done this in my life. And God said, you did that for that woman, get ready for the next level. These are the things we do in the spirit to rise. Is God helping someone? The days of eating alone, that's what destroys people. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. Let me challenge you. Let your one naira, your one pound, your one dollar add a smile to someone's face invest in relationships number four this is the most important discussion about the most important discussion go for an end of year retreat I'm repeating myself you have heard me before but I will always drum it because these are ordinances that are fixed most believers are not taught that a retreat is part of the believers process Retreats are times where you set apart, you set apart time to be with the Lord, to be all by yourself, flogging it out with destiny. Listen carefully. A retreat is a time that is set apart, away from the noise. If God grants you grace and you are buoyant enough, you can travel somewhere, be alone with God. At any level, you can even use your house just away from the noise and distraction take a day take it two days take three days and spend with the lord what do you do in a retreat number one thanksgiving the first thing we do in a retreat is to personally lavishly express gratitude to the god who has kept you please learn this believers must be taught what do you do in a retreat number two an honest appraisal of the current year the year ending now you do an appraisal of the year this is the second thing we do in a retreat after you are done thanking god rolling before your maker thanking him for all he's done the next thing is you must appraise the year 
and I've taught you the indices that you use to appraise your year. Your spiritual growth, your level of mental transformation, your level of health and wholeness. Are we together? Your relationships, your finances, purpose and, you know, destiny advancement. You gauge your life against these indices. Have I done well this year? What would I have done better this year that I did not do? What opportunities did I miss? What opportunities did I maximize? What instructions did I ignore? What was the price, the consequence? Are we together? Let me tell you this. When you are doing an appraisal of yourself, do not lie to yourself. Be sincere and honest, as transparent before God as you can be. Okay, this year, I lost a lot of opportunities because of carelessness. This year, from a spiritual standpoint, I was not serious in my prayer life. Not to feel condemned. It is between you and God. It's nobody's business. This year, had my highest rating in terms of spiritual growth. But as a father, I must confess that this year, I, was, I did not perform my fatherly role to my family as should be. I allowed my wife to be the person feeding us all through this year. And I did not even tell her thank you. You're having a retreat now. Lord, forgive me. Don't feel condemned. Lord, forgive me. This year, I allowed my children. I don't even know where they got their school fees from. It's only God that saved them. They would have prostituted themselves. I take responsibility. A retreat is not the time to dance and ask God for more anointing. You appraise yourself first. After thanksgiving, appraisal. As a man of God, did I teach Koinonia the best that I could? Did I help the people? Did I manipulate the people? Did I teach them truth? Was I sound in scripture? Is there something about my teaching method I need to change? As a CEO, go for a retreat. It doesn't matter that it's a secular corporation. Okay, have I paid my people well? We made so much gain this year. Did I share the honor? Did I increase their salary? Some of the pillars in my company, did I bless them? Or I just ignored everybody? I ate all the profit alone as a CEO. And the Holy Spirit tells you this is wrong. You need to change. Motivate your people. Encourage them. The security man who stopped armed robbers from killing you, he's still receiving 5,000 till now. You would have been dead, long dead. The man has a secret to all your office doors and all of that. And he's not touched one naira. You are still giving him 5,000. He told you his wife has given birth. You are still giving him 5,000 retreats that's where you flog it out as a man of god i need to improve on my teaching there's a lot of spiritual laziness no i need to step up maybe i need to go and meet another man of god have some time of discussion let iron sharpen iron you see that now as a ministry i think we need to move to the next level structural establishment as a businessman in the place you are appraising yourself we had potential to have five branches of my business but laziness and carelessness and fear kept me in one place this is what you do during a retreat any great man whether in the secular or in the faith walk who does not practice retreats can never be exceptional end of year retreats now generally speaking you shouldn't wait to, till the end of year before you do retreats you can fragment your life across various phases. There are people who have retreats once every month. They have retreats at strategic periods of their lives, their birthdays, their anniversaries. But every believer has a kingdom culture. One of the reasons why we give break, you can imagine, I told you already that a dear man of God confronted me one time and said, Apostle, you're an interesting person. How do you give a ministry this size break? What if you resume and nobody comes? You know, we give breaks for these kinds of reasons. To give you room because your relationship with God is greater than ministry. If you remain faithful, koinonia people and you are going down spiritually, we are only playing games here. You know that, right? So this is you and God now. Spending time with God, spending time with family, spending time building your destiny. I want you built too, not just the ministry built. It is people who are built that can build the vision. You believe that? If a CEO goes to have two days with his directors or alone with God, imagine what happens when he returns. 
by January, February, that person would have surpassed ordinary standards. Now, let me tell you the truth. This is the reason why most Africans do not thrive because we do not believe in this. Without trying to, you know, create any bias of regional biases, one of the things that you learn from the West is that they, they maximize moments like this. They take the time, they can travel somewhere to one village that nobody knows and you will see someone who is a multi-millionaire in a village somewhere, just book an Airbnb and sit down there asking serious questions. These are the kind of people that Jesus said they are not far from, you know, the kingdom. Because they are practicing, all that is left is for them to be born again. But as far as pro-kingdom principles are concerned, they are working in it. Let me challenge you for some of you. You have never had a retreat. Don't be too busy for a retreat. It's an attack. There are things God has wanted to tell you. He's been wanting to tell you for a long time. But maybe your being a worker, your being diligent as a worker will even distract you. The vicissitudes of life. Now in that silence, he can come to you and say, since March, I've been wanting to point something to you. But you are too busy to hear. Now thank God you have given me time. And one direction from him, that leads me to the third. What do you do in a retreat? 